easily the most famous number in the illustrious history of Manchester United, but in the Premier League era, we've had players on opposite ends of the spectrum don the famous number seven shirt. In this video, I'm going to rank each of them nine to one. Let's get into it. What is up everybody, Jacob Charlton here with Amateur Hour Sports, where we give you Ron and Filter sporting content Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So if it is your first time here with me today and you like what you see, maybe you want more insight and opinion on the sporting world in your life and perhaps some informative videos on the history of sport, make sure you are subscribed to Amateur Hour Sports. Like I said, nine players have donned the number seven in the Premier League era for Manchester United and I am going to rank them all the way from the worst to best. The talent on the list, like I said, definitely hits each end of the spectrum. The shirt has had its issues in the last decade or so, finding that elite player to wear it. But no player is safe. Let's get into it. Starting with number nine, Alexis Sanchez. Holy fuck. He was, he's so bad. He is so bad. Like, there's a lot of people, like, there's going to be some guys on this list who have their redeeming qualities, but given the amount of money we spent and how much money he makes a week, it is absolutely baffling how horrifyingly awful Alexis Sanchez was for Manchester United. I mean, it started with his unveiling video playing the piano. I mean, we should have known there was a nightmare imminent when we saw that video. I mean, every time he's on the ball... He just looks so sluggish. He doesn't look comfortable on the ball. He gives the ball away so often. That's the thing. He gives the ball away so often. He cannot find a pass. He cannot take on his opponents. Like he is nowhere near an absolute shadow of what he was at Arsenal. I was very excited when they brought him in, you know, joining a forceful attack. You know, Lukaku was there. Pogba was there. There was all these talented players, Martial and Rashford as well, but... He never, ever, ever performed. I mean, I, his first goal against Huddersfield was he missed a penalty and scored the rebound and celebrated like he had just won the World Cup. Oh my goodness, what an absolute nightmare that was. Very, very, very little output in a Manchester United shirt. His only saving grace, maybe that winner against Newcastle after being down 2-0, scores in the 90th minute to make it 3-2. But other than that, there's just nothing good about him for United. I pray he is not in a United shirt next season. I pray we are not paying part of his wages on loan somewhere. I hope we can just fucking sell him. Number eight on the list, Memphis Depay. It's astonishing how he has performed so admirably. He is a pivotal component of not only the Lyon side who, you know, fight for a Champions League position every year, but the Dutch national team, a pivotal component of a team that looked like one of the favorites going into Euro 2020. Obviously, that tournament has been delayed and, and thankfully for Depay because, you know, he probably wasn't going to be there because of his huge injury. Next season, he will likely be a part of Euro 2020 that's taking place in 2021. But it's very baffling how he could never perform in a United shirt. It was such a great signing, one that I was very excited for, you know, a very young it's a startlet coming out of the Airy DVZ, a league that has produced some phenomenal players and has produced great players for Manchester United, like the, the likes of Ruud van Nistelrooy. But when he came into United, it, it's like he just could not perform. He could not dribble the ball. He couldn't dribble the ball, like straight up. If you watched him play, every time he went to go take on the opposition right back, it was almost like he dribbled straight into him every single time. Like his only good game was against... Mitchie land after we lost the first leg to that Danish team in the Europa League and then we went on to destroy them in the second leg and Memphis Depay made their right back cry because he he nutmegged him a few times during the game that was Rashford's debut where he scored a brace his first ever game for Manchester United that was like, his, like the only game he ever really played well every time he lined up a free kick in his first season at United the commentators would be like oh he scored the most free kicks in Europe last season with a time at PSV. I don't think he fucking hit the net one time on a free kick in a Manchester United shirt. Just awful, awful, awful. I'm happy that he's starting to excel now, but he was so poor for United. Number seven on the list, Michael Owen. The reason he kind of stays above the... Well, everybody's going to be above Alexis Sanchez. I put him above Memphis Depay because... 
we knew what Michael Owen was when we signed him. We knew what we were getting. You know, he was signed on an incentive-based contract where, you know, he was paid through performances when he played and when he scored goals. So, you know, he came because he was at a bit of a problem point in his career where he just left Newcastle. Nobody was really coming for him. So, Sir Alex Ferguson took a stab at him. And to be fair, Michael Owen in his spells did have some good moments. Those spells were very limited, but he has produced at times some some good play. I mean, who will ever forget for decades and decades that that 96 minute winner against Manchester City in the derby to make it 4-3. I mean, I mean you can just picture it just talking about. It. That is something you can hear as you imagine it. And there's also that hat trick against Wolfsburg in the Champions League where we played a less than stellar lineup and because of the likes of Michael Owen in that game we overcame. I know it was a group game, but you know, he produced in spells. You didn't get a lot of play time, but we knew what he was. We weren't expecting anything. It was a free transfer. We weren't expecting things like from the Depays and from the Alexis Sanchez's, but with Michael Owen, you know, we got what we expected really. We, you know, we, and in the end, we gave him the Premier League medal that Liverpool could never do. He won the Ballon d'Or with Liverpool at a very tender age. I think it was about 21 years old, came into United obviously at the you know the twilight point of his career and you know we got to appreciate for what he was he wasn't anything fantastic he did what he had to do sometimes you know that's about it for michael owen number six on the list angel di maria i put him here on the list because you know it was such a promising start for man united he was so good at the start i remember signing him how excited i was you know he was in the fifa team of the year the world 11 for that year he played half the season at united when he was in the fifa team of the year and he, he really fell off the face of the earth quickly at manchester united you know he gave us so much hope there was that uh, phenomenal chip against leicester he scooped casper schmeichel and you know we're on this dream you know we're up 3-1 against leicester we ended up losing fucking 5-3 but Di Maria was so phenomenal at the start and then he just falls off eventually getting replaced by Ashley Young in the starting 11 for that season because you know we had that 4-1-4-1 system going where Fellaini and Rooney were starting in the midfield and maybe you know Ander Herrera just behind them Mata on the right and it was Di Maria's spot on the left but it got taken by fucking Ashley Young and there's a great deal of success from that season from Van Hal if I'm not mistaken but Di Maria, oh my goodness, it just so quickly fell off. I have him here on this list because, you know, he did show those spells, but, oh man, what a snake. I hate him. He hates United. We beat them in the Champions League. We beat PSG and Di Maria was almost reduced to tears, so we'll leave it at that. Number five on the list, Antonio Valencia. For this one, we must consider his time in the number seven shirt because he had such great spells in the number 25 jersey, but then when Michael Owen left, and Michael Owen was the one who took it off, Cristiano Ronaldo, talk about a fucking downgrade. But then when Michael Owen was gone, the seven shirt was vacant, we, Antonio Valencia snapped it up, which is a bit odd because I thought that, you know, Nanny would have wanted it, but Valencia got it, and off the back of being Manchester United's player of the season, sure, why not? He was tremendous as a 25, as a winger, but then he really fell off in form. He had that big injury he sustained in a European match, and... Nothing was really going well for him in the number seven shirt, really. And he decided to switch back to 25, thankfully, because he started performing a lot better once he switched back. But he was decent in spells in the number seven jersey. It's a shame, you know, that this is the guy who's fifth in the list, the midway point of the list. There has been some very less than stellar players donning the number seven. And unfortunately, Antonio Valencia is one of them, but... He's better than the rest of the guys on the list. You know, he still gave us some admirable performances. It's just he could not really hold up to the pressure that the famous Manchester United number seven shirt has, especially, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo was gone. Was it four years prior to that happening? So we weren't in this phase where there were no good or the cursed number seven shirt and the pressure was too big for Valencia to handle. Switched to number 25 and, you know, started performing a lot better. Thankfully, he made that switch back. Number four on the list, Andre Kinchelskis. This is where we're getting to the more proper part of the list. Andre Kinchelskis, definitely much better than Valencia putting him at number four, but there is a big gap for the top three. We will get there. But Kinchelskis is the one who started off this era, the Premier League era, in the number seven. He got it taken away from him. Uh, eventually, we'll get to that as well. But Kinchelskis, back when 
4-4-2 was how it always used to be. The famous 4-4-2 of Manchester United always used that formation with Sir Alex Ferguson. Kinchelskis was a proper winger for that formation, most of the time playing on the right wing. He had a great bit of pace about him, a great bit of trickery, could pop up with a goal here and there. He was a quality player. He was a quality player for the formation. He always ran up and down the pitch, you know, the old style of the winger, the right winger. He did his job. He was a good player and warrants his fourth place spot on the list. Not a ton to say about him, but quality player. Number three on the list, David Beckham. This is the real meat and potatoes of the list, the elite tier. David Beckham sits at number three on the list. He wore quite a few different numbers in Manchester United, but this is the most famous number that he wore at United. He is known for being the number seven throughout his career and you know, probably inspired me a little bit. My number, I always choose number seven, and it's probably a lot to do with David Beckham. In his time at United, he grew into such a glamorous footballer, a real superstar. He allowed footballers to have the ability to be sort of like movie star celebrities, just tremendously famous. And it was the number seven shirt, the time when he wore that, when he really excelled into probably the most famous footballer in the world. I would argue that he is the most famous footballer of all time. I think Ronaldo and Messi are starting to kind of climb into that. But David Beckham, in terms of his fame, was second to none, really. And he really transformed how we can perceive footballers. And let's also talk about, he was absolutely quality on the pitch. The right boot of dreams, his ability to whip in across, to shoot from distance and probably the best free kick taker of all time, if not one of the best free kick takers of all time. And it even came up in huge moments, in big moments, with the ability to play on the right wing. He could also play, you know, in the center of a 4-4-2, just a tremendous, tremendous player. The technical ability on him was spectacular. Number two on the list, Eric Cantona. It's arguable he could be third on the list. I think David Beckham and him are pretty close in terms of being second and third on the list, but I'm going to go with Cantona here because, you know, being captain of Manchester United for that period, he was one of Sir Alex Ferguson's favorite. Um, Manchester United fans have voted him in the past as the greatest player in the United's history. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but, you know, there's a reason he's nicknamed God because he has scored such tremendous and big goals for Manchester United, a true warrior, a true leader on the pitch, other than when he ninja kicked, kung fu kicked a Crystal Palace fan. I mean, that was pretty cool, to be honest. But for the most part, absolute quality, just oozes class on and off the pitch with so much talent. I decided he had to be a tick above David Beckham. Didn't have a long, long spell at Manchester United. He retired at the tender age of 30, but still... What he did in his five years at Manchester United is absolutely tremendous. Warrants his second place spot on this list. Number one on the list, there should be no surprises, Cristiano Ronaldo. Not a lot of players have won the Ballon d'Or in their time with Manchester United. You know, there's Bobby Charlton, there's George Best, there's Dennis Law, and there's Cristiano Ronaldo. And oh my goodness, in that 2007-2008 season, oh wow. Cristiano Ronaldo was an absolute phenom on the pitch. This is not, you know, the Real Madrid style Cristiano Ronaldo. Just his dribbling and his pace, his ability to take people one-on-one. -on -one, he was at his best doing those things in a Manchester United shirt. I feel very bad for the people who never witnessed the type of player he was at Manchester United because it was different to the one at Real Madrid. Obviously, a better all-around player at Real Madrid, but the things he could do with the ball... His technique and dribbling at Manchester United was absolutely stunning. I mean, almost willed us towards that Champions League, scored in the final with that incredible header against Chelsea. I know there was a ton of great players on there, but there's a reason Cristiano Ronaldo won the Ballon d'Or that season. Obviously, so much talent in that United squad. Obviously, obviously, like defense. I mean, that, that front three with Tevez, Rooney, and Ronaldo, but Ronaldo... Many will agree with this. Just they still sing his name at Old Trafford. It's been over a decade since he left. We all appreciate what Cristiano Ronaldo brought to Manchester United. We understand why he had to move on to Real Madrid, but we are very thankful for his time. Number one, the greatest player to wear the number seven in the Premier League era for Manchester United. It's a great shame how 
how much the number seven has fallen off for Manchester United since Cristiano Ronaldo's departure. You know, we had Michael Owen, who, you know, we knew what he was, right? But he still wasn't that good. Then you have Valencia, who was poor in that jersey. Then you have like Depay, there's Di Maria, there's Sanchez, just so poor. And I think like they've all combined since Cristiano Ronaldo left for, I think, 15 league goals. Like, Ronaldo would get that in one Premier League season if he slept through all 38 Premier League games. It's just a shame. It's vacant right now. The jersey is vacant at the moment. I hope that we can bring in a player who can really, you know, bring back the presence and the glamour of that famous number seven jersey. You know, <laughs> wishful thinking maybe Jaden Sancho can come in and don that playing on the right wing. But again, very big wishful thinking. But one can dream. Make sure you comment down below if I got it right. Who is the greatest player to wear the number seven shirt in the Premier League era for Manchester United? And as well, maybe who is the greatest player to ever wear the number seven jersey for Manchester United? But that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like the video if you like and subscribe to Amateur Art Sports for more content just like this as well. Hit that notification bell. We post four times a week. Stay up to date with all the content coming your way from Amateur Hour Sports. At the end of the day, I believe what I say. And if you disagree, that's okay. We'll see you again next time.